Welcome to this video demonstrating how to examine the abdomen. To begin the examination, you must start with wiper. Wash your hands, introduce yourself to the patient, stating your name and role, ask permission to examine the patient, and check if they are in any pain. Expose your patient appropriately and reposition them lying flat. Begin the examination by inspecting from the end of the bed. Does your patient look unwell? and are they comfortable? Is there any evidence of weight loss or jaundice? Look around the bed for anything suggestive of abdominal disease. For example, nasogastric tubes, nil by mouth signs, abdominal drains or vomit bowls. Now begin your peripheral inspection with the hands. Look specifically for palmar erythema, nail changes, Jupiterans contracture or clubbing. Palmar erythema is a skin condition where the palms of both hands become red. Jupiterans contracture occurs when one or more fingers become permanently bent in a flexed position. Clubbing is a deformity of the fingertips. Then move on to examine the face and mouth. Assess for evidence of conjunctival pallor and examine the sclera for evidence of jaundice. Ask the patient to open their mouth assessing for evidence of dehydration and their oral hygiene. At this point, make sure the patient is lying flat. Now, begin inspection of the abdomen, looking specifically for previous scars or swelling. Once you have inspected, you should move on to palpation of the abdomen. Before you begin, Position yourself to the side of the patient and ensure that your hands are warm. Light palpation of the abdomen is used to assess for any tenderness, while deep palpation is to assess for any masses or enlarged organs. Begin with light palpation of the nine segments of the abdomen. Ensure to ask the patient if they have any abdominal pain and begin palpating in the farthest area away from this location. Make sure that you are looking at the patient's face throughout to ensure you are not causing undue pain. The nine segments are shown in this diagram. These are the terms that you should use. Once you have palpated all nine segments, repeat the palpation, but this time press more deeply. Examine the abdomen in a systematic fashion, from the left upper quadrant, also known as the hypochondriac, the left lumbar to the left lower quadrant, also known as iliac, the suprapubic or hypogastric, the umbilicus, epigastrium, the right upper quadrant or hypochondriac, right lumbar. and right lower quadrant or iliac. Now move on to palpate the organs of the abdomen, starting with the liver. Begin with your fingertips in the right iliac fossa. Ask your patient to take deep breath and push in as your patient breathes out. This should allow you to feel the edge of the liver as the abdominal contents are pushed down. Move upward in two to three centimeter increments towards the costal margin until a liver edge is felt. To palpate the spleen, place your hands in a similar fashion to liver palpation. Begin below the umbilicus. Move in a stepwise fashion diagonally towards the left costal margin. If the spleen is enlarged, you will feel it pushing against your fingertips. Palpation of the kidneys is also known as balloting. Place one hand underneath the patient at the loin or lumbar region. Place your other hand flat on the abdomen at the same level. Use the hand that is positioned under the patient to push the kidney forward. If the kidney is enlarged, you may feel it push against your other hand. Percuss all nine segments to elicit any percussion tenderness, then percuss over specific organs for signs of enlargement. 
to percuss for the liver, start in the right lower quadrant and percuss up the abdomen towards the costal margin. When you reach the lower border of the liver, the percussion note will become dull. Repeat this process to find the upper border of the liver. Begin percussion in the right chest wall and move downwards towards the abdomen and again you will notice dullness when you reach the liver. To percuss for the spleen, percuss over the left hypochondrium. This is known as traub space. The spleen should sound dull to percussion. Then percuss towards the midline to assess for any enlargement. Percussion of the bladder is done in the hypogastric or suprapubic segment. This should usually be resonant on percussion, but may be dull in cases where the bladder is enlarged. The final part of the examination is auscultation. Using the diaphragm of your stethoscope, listen for bowel sounds. These are best heard in the right iliac segment, but may be heard near the umbilicus. Listen for a maximum of 10 seconds before declaring if bowel sounds are absent. Consider whether you need to perform a urinalysis. For this, take a single stick and dip it into the urine, ensuring all the coloured blocks are soaked. Remove and allow to drip on a paper towel. Line up the coloured blocks with the appropriate markers on the multi-sticks tub, ensuring that they don't bleed into each other. Then record your results. When you have finished the examination, thank your patient, offer to help them redress and make sure they are comfortable. Then wash your hands.